Good morning, everyone. I am wonderfully happy on this beautiful day. I hope you guys are too. It is Friday. Today, we're going to talk about sex. <laughs> you know, I like to give you all a warning in case you have kids or you don't want to listen to this topic. So there's my warning. <laughs> Let's talk about sex, baby. <laughs> So my last uh, story, part four, was where me and my sister had gotten in trouble and it was about the felony and all that. If you haven't watched that, please do. So now the reason I said we're talking about sex is because that's just kind of where we are in my life. And I've also had a lot of questions about whether like, I'm a virgin or not. So I just wanted to get that out there now for everyone. I am not a virgin. Yes, I have had sex. I know that might sound weird because I'm a mother and I've had a child, but I could have very well have been a virgin mother. Isn't that cool? That would have been really cool, I think. Yes, it's possible. <laughs> no, not by Jesus. <laughs> um, so when the whole, you know, like I said, the arrest stuff went happened, and my sister got actually charged with the felony because she got me off. Um, so I didn't really like have much to do with her at that point because she was at home. She worked and then she went home like you have to, you know. So, and I didn't really have any friends like to hang out with. So there was this one girl I worked with, her name was Chrissy. I just started going out with her like at night. And uh, I just kind of got like a little angry and depressed. Well, I've always been depressed, you know, in my life. This is kind of me. But I was, I just got more angry and I never really had a lot of anger, you know. Like I'm not an angry person. But at that stage, I don't know, like, my parents really, they were probably fed up with all of our crap that, you know, we were going through and how stupid we were and being. And I don't remember, like, them really, like, having a lot to do with us at that point. And, um, you know, I was kind of, like, alone and, like, I got really angry. And I, I, I don't know if you guys are angry people or not. You know, anger, anger comes to everyone. But it's a good thing when you let it in. If you need it, it gives you, you know, that... Like, like a toughness and that shield and it gives you, you know, that strength you need sometimes to be angry. But when you let too much anger in your heart and in your soul, it kind of becomes like a habit and it can take over your personality. I mean, some people can become really angry and bitter and they can't let it go. Um, and that's almost kind of what started to happen with me because you can embrace that and you can, you know, feed off that anger and it can give you like, you know, like a purpose and an energy. But not the kind you maybe want. So I learned that, that that year what anger was and how I didn't want to just like let it in and keep letting it in. It was kind of hard to not to be an angry person at the end of that year and to kind of you know become more of my just happy relaxed self. But I went through a lot of anger that year and um, I did have sex. <laughs> I always wanted to. Like I said, I'm a very sexual person. You know, even when I was like, a, you know, a younger teen, you know, I was always on my mind. I always thought about it. I'm sure everyone does or most people do. Um, when I first had it for the first time, I just basically did it because I was tired of waiting. Uh, I was tired of the expectation, waiting for, you know, someone, wondering what it's like, you know, wanting to experience it. I just really wanted to just kind of like do it just to see what it was like. And I could tell by all the people that I met that I didn't really like like anybody. So I just picked the one guy that, you know, I was hanging out with and I mean, he wasn't like my boyfriend or anything, but he was just like a young thug guy, you know, and I'm not gonna say his name, but it was nothing. It was nothing special. Actually, it was in a pool and it didn't really work that well because, I don't know, the water and everything. But um, after that, uh, I just kept having sex with him and then I think five guys total. For some reason, I'm not remembering. I have a horrible memory. It could have been six. I only remember five. But there's possible six. I don't know. That might sound horrible to some people. <laughs> But, um, one of the five was actually when I was drunk at a party with, uh, Chrissy and I did not want to have sex with him. I really don't remember at all how it happened. Like I said, I just was drinking and I obviously reached the point where I drank too much and got drunk without like, you know, like it was the first time I ever did it too. I, I was pretty smart as far as not like drinking and doing that kind of stuff around like parties and stuff. But this one time I just let go, I drank a lot, I got drunk, and I do know that I had sex with a stranger guy because I kind of remember parts of it in the bed, like doing it, and I just, 
afterwards the next morning when I was at home and I woke up I felt so horrible and this is like and there's no reason to it's not like you know I did something horribly bad or you know anything to, like, to feel guilty about for years but I literally I had this like the most disgusting feeling inside like for years it's so like ugh. I think it's because I, I knew it was unprotected and I was scared to tell my mom that I could have like AIDS or a disease or be pregnant you know what I'm saying I didn't want to I was ashamed that I let myself just be so irresponsible that I got drunk and I had sex with some random person that I don't even know you know so that literally took me years to not feel disgusting about myself with that one. The other four were just ones I chose. The last one was someone I lived with um, for like maybe a year or so. It wasn't serious. I, I, mean, I wouldn't even call him my boyfriend. It was just a way to get out of that house I was in. And it was fun, you know, the thought of living with a guy. And it was just basically about the sex. We were like rabbits. I mean, that was just all we did all day long. Um, and he was a, he turned out to be like a druggie. He like stole my crap, stole my money and my game system. And I found like pipes and spoons and stuff in his room. So I just, you know, I left that. And that was actually right around the time when um, Amy, I'll get to that a different part, when Amy moved out to uh, Weaverville. And so I went and lived with her. But so there's my sexual experiences. It wasn't a ton. It was just in that one year, those five guys, four of them I remember. <laughs> um, and you know, honestly, I have a huge bucket list of sex things that I want to do before I die. Okay, I'm 45. Like I said, I've been celibate for over 25 years since then, you know, like I said, I haven't done anything since then. And there are so many things I want to do because back then I was just a young teenager and it was just basically, I don't want to say the F word, you know, but it was basically just effing, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like romantic. I don't know what it's like to cuddle, to make love, to be held, you know what I'm saying? Um, plus lots of other things I never really got to experience. I want to experience so bad. So maybe one day, you never know, that I might find someone that I want to experience those things with again. <laughs> you guys might be like, why don't you want to? Why don't you want to have sex right now? It's not that I don't want to. It's that I'm the kind of person where I'm like super emotional. I hate saying that because I know that all the guys probably and all the women probably think of their crazy exes that were emotional. I don't mean it like that. I mean like I have a lot of empathy and a lot of feelings and um oh, I mean I might, I might not have been like that when I was a teen you know when I was having sex with those guys but now sex or uh, being turned on it comes from emotions like I'd have to emotionally be attached to someone and like them in order to be horny enough to want to have sex with them like I don't want to just go out and have sex with some random person the sex itself wouldn't turn me on or get me off like being emotionally involved with someone would, you know, so I'm gonna wait till I ever, if I do, get emotionally involved with someone and then hopefully all the rest of my bucket list will come. <laughs> do you guys have things that you've never done yet that you'd like to? I don't want to die without doing, well, I mean, oh well, who cares, but it'd be nice to get some of these things off my list. But there's my sex stuff. It wasn't bad, was it? It wasn't bad at all. It was brief. I didn't like torture you guys with that, did I? Hope not. So, I was an angry sexual teenager. Is that what I just said? <laughs> um, yeah, I think I did just say that. <laughs> but that was brief. Um, like I said, Amy, she had Trevon, she got pregnant on purpose. And she had him. And when he was one, she got a mobile home out in Weaverville, which is, you know, kind of out way out in the country. And she didn't want to live there alone. She wanted, you know, me to come and to stay with her for a few weeks. And I said, sure, that'd be fun, you know. And so I did. I packed up, like, just some stuff for the few weeks and I went out and I lived with her. Well, that ended up never changing. I never left. That was, like, how we started as an actual family, me and Amy and Trevon was when I just went out there to stay for a few weeks and ended up just staying like indefinitely. 
because it was fun. You know, it was fun with him and her and having that family, you know, feeling. And uh, we just started, you know, working like together and same jobs and just kind of putting our money together for bills and stuff. And it just kind of turned into, you know, like I said, like a, like a real family dynamic instead of just, you know, me living with her. If you grew up living with your sister or brother as a child, then you know that that can be very difficult. Imagine as an adult trying to live with your brother and sister. Uh, it was... <laughs> It was a roller coaster, basically, because, um, you know, we argued and we bitched and we fought a lot, you know. Uh, we were teens and we definitely had our disagreements. I always tried to not let, like, my temper and stuff just go right away. I would um, hold it and hold it and, you know, like I said, I'm kind of like a silent type when there are arguments and stuff. but. Amy, my sister, would end up like just saying things and like kind of like picking on me and just like going, going, going on me until I like snapped. And then like when I couldn't take any more of her crap, it was like I would just explode and I just start like, you know, like bitching and yelling and cussing. Back then I would cuss all the time, I had a horrible mouth. And then my sister would be like, look, look at you know, to Trevon or whatever. Like, then and she'd be like, oh, look, Elizabeth, you know. She's just like, blah, blah, blah. And it was kind of like a pattern for the first year. Uh, we, Like I said, we argued and a lot and fought a lot. Um, but we ended up working it out. And I remember that those first years, like the first two, three years uh, living with her and Trevon, it was like we totally grew and changed. And it was, it was really a wonderful thing. Um... You know, like we would communicate more. I would tell her the things that she'd do that was mean, and she would tell me things that you know I did that affected her or was mean to her. And we would actually try to you know work on those things. And um, you know, within like two years of living together, we were really happy. And Trevon, <laughs> so sweet. It's kind of sad to me, but Trevon was the sweetest little child. If you guys have seen him. Mm, like on YouTube or in person or whatever like now as an adult or when he was a teen like maybe 13, 14, 15 and older um, he's totally different now than he was when he was younger like when he was you know 11 and younger um, he was he, more like me I mean he was always smiling he was always happy everybody loved him and talked to him and he was just so different, you know, like now he doesn't seem to like smile that much or give off all like the wonderful energies, you know, like he used to. But as a little baby, oh my gosh, as a little toddler, uh, he was just so sweet. And after like a year and a half or so of living with him, he on his own started calling me mom also, you know, because I, like I said, I was, I lived with him all the time. I did everything for him the same as Amy. You know, I put my money in the pot just like her. You know, I loved him just like her. I took care of him. I, you know, I helped with everything like she did. So I guess, like, we never planned it that way. But I guess, you know, to him, having, he just ended up having two moms living with him. And he would call me mom. Um, he never called me aunt. He, of course, he called me Elizabeth. But he called her Amy, too. You know, both of our kids called us Elizabeth and Amy. I guess some people say that their kids don't call them by their names and that's weird. I don't know. I guess it's personal preference, but he did call me mom. Sometimes though, this is the sad part, is uh, when he got angry or like if Amy was angry at me and he picked up on it or if I was making him do something he didn't want to do, you know, he would then revert and not call me mom and like call me like, you know, Elizabeth, you know, and it just kind of like over the years, it kind of like, it hurt because... You know, like I felt like, eventually I felt like his mom, and I felt like I was, but then when he reverted back, it just, I don't know, it kind of hurt. And um, it kind of made me just always wish I had, you know, like her, like him, like someone who loved me like that, like more than anything, you know, like a, like a child. There's like a bond between a child and their mom or dad, you know, and I wanted that so bad. I wanted to be loved, like unconditionally like that, you know. Um, don't we all though? <laughs> I think that is all of our deepest darkest secrets is everybody wants to be loved and needed by someone else.
Oh, God, here I go again. Why do I always cry on these videos? I try so hard. I even tell myself, okay, today I was totally happy and in a wonderful mood. And it's not like I'm sad or anything. It's just, I guess it's just me. You guys should know me by now, right? I hope you don't mind the tears. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Minus these tears. Let's get back to the story. So I live with Amy. We became a family. We, Like I said, we worked together like at Earth Fair. We worked there together. You know, before we had worked at McDonald's when we were younger. Everywhere we seemed to always work and be together. We were very irresponsible as teens. Um, anytime we would make money, we'd just go like spend it on just junk. We, did, we, weren't, we weren't very responsible with our bills. We were constantly asking like our mom and dad for our help with money. We did work though. I uh, never wanted a career. My parents and everyone was always like, you know, you should think of a career, you should think of a career. But I just never could think of the future like that. And I still can't. I, I, I guess I'm a person who literally just lives in the moment. Like I want to just live my life right now to the f absolute fullest. And starting a career just didn't do that. So I never ever wanted to start a career. I w actually thought about the military. I would have liked the military. Except I was just, uh, I just didn't want them to like control me. You know, it's like my fear was, even though I live with my sister who ended up controlling me. You guys didn't hear that. <laughs> Anyways, so we just worked, like I said, at the grocery store earth fair. And uh, we eventually started our own nail salon because I loved nails and makeup. I know I told you guys that. I liked doing makeup and I loved doing nails. My nails have always grown really long and, and hard without needing like fake nails. And so I'd always polish them. You remember I said I stole a lot of makeup and polish if you'd watched my other videos. Well, yeah, I had like a ton of polish colors now because of that. And I love doing my nails. So eventually we went to a nail like school and took the classes and became nail technicians. And we did start our own business unfortunately it had a lot of potential we did really good it was a great shop we actually had clients we were good nail technicians we could have taken that itself far but we were just too irresponsible um we didn't show up on time sometimes maybe kept people waiting you know just things like that like not responsible enough that we just kind of like screwed up our own business um in that area so we stopped being nail technicians and, um, what do we do after that? So, we were nail technicians. My mind is drawing a blank. It's like, what did I do after that? I don't even remember. Is it just me who doesn't remember lots of stuff? Oh, I know, duh. So, we were working at Earth Fair, and we were both cashiers, and there was this lady who came in all the time. My dad was a meat cutter in the meat department. And uh, we all knew this lady who would shop, and she she got pregnant. And she was when she got really big pregnant, one day she asked me, it was early in the morning, and I was so excited. She said that she is looking, because she, you know, she had a career, she had to go to work, that she was looking for a nanny to watch her baby when it was born. And that, she, you know, like I said, I've been at her cashier for years, and she knew that I was a, a great, wonderful, kind person and kind of, you know, knew who I was. And she asked me if I would be her nanny. I was so surprised because I had babysat as a teen, you know, off and on, like in the neighborhood and stuff. I never thought of it as like a real, you know, like a real job, you know what I'm saying? Um, but when she told me what she would offer me, like the money and the hours and, you know, the rest, I was like, holy crap. Yes, please. Because not only, you know, like I said, it was a pay better than what I was making and, you know, just the thought of being in a nice house, with, you know, instead of like as a cashier, I mean, come on, right? But I loved children. Uh, like I said, ever since moving with Trevon and being around him, I just, I just grew more and more and more to loving children and wanting to be around children and wanting my own child. Because I don't know if you've watched some of these first My Life ones where I said when I was a younger kid, I never, I didn't want to even be a girl, let alone ever have kids. I never wanted kids. But at this point, you know, when I was, um, well, I was probably like, what, 18, 19 by now, um, I really, really wanted a child. And the thought of 
be able to be a nanny to her little baby. Ah, oh, that was such a blessing. So of course I told her yes. And um, she, like I said, she was almost due. And so it wasn't very long at all till I got to be a nanny. Uh, and oh, it was so wonderful. I love kids and kids love me. And I love teaching and helping them. And it was just the best job ever. I, I, I remember just always like going outside and walking with the stroller and taking her like to the park. And uh, I was her nanny for quite a while. I mean, she literally like grew up, you know, with me watching her and she was so sweet. I loved her. I loved all the kids that ended up watching. Um, this is what I became. I became a nanny and my sister ended up becoming a babysitter in the house. Um, so she was like an inside house nanny in her own home with our kids and I went out of the house and was a nanny and that's what we kind of basically did for a long time. Now at this stage I start having oh my gosh like floods of feelings of like maternity feelings. I'm sure it's like an internal thing that happens to women at certain maybe stages I'm not sure but I couldn't stop thinking about a child of my own and not just like thinking like wishing about a child of my own but dreaming and feeling the child I mean I literally would have dreams all the time about this kid you know and I'd even see in my dreams the child it was a blonde girl with blonde hair and she was just always just smiling and happy and I told my mom I was like, you know, I'm dreaming about a kid. I have this feeling like I like it was almost like the soul of that kid was like hanging around. And I could just feel it calling to me. It was like I knew that I needed to have a child. I know it sounds maybe weird or stupid, but it's true. So for like a year or a year and a half, I just started buying like baby clothes at yard sales and little things here and there, you know, and putting them in like tubs and. I don't know if it's called like nesting, if it, people do that before they're even pregnant, but I was totally doing that. And my mom was like, she's like, I don't know if she thought it was crazy or what. She ended up helping me like getting little clothes and blankets and stuff. But I totally, totally had a feeling that I needed like a child of my own, man. So after, like I said, after being a nanny for to this girl for like probably a few years. I mean, she was older. She was at least like a year and a half or maybe two. I don't know. My whole time thing is kind of like, you know, these are estimates. Um, I just couldn't wait anymore. I wanted to have a child. And at, like when we were at Earth Fair, I worked at Earth Fair too, you know, part time. I would def always looking at guys. Like I knew I wouldn't you know, like I said, I've never really found anyone yet that I, I wanted to be with, like, as a partner. And plus, you know, like I said, I was living with Amy and we were kind of like a family already. So I was like, okay, how am I going to have a child? You know, I don't want to just go out and have unprotected sex with some random guy. Even if it was a guy I knew, you know, like, kind of like talked to or knew, I would still have to have unprotected sex. And that would be risking, you know, my life, you know what I'm saying? And I might just die, like, from age or something. I didn't know what to do to have a baby, which is really hard if you're a woman and you don't have a man and you want a child. It's like, and there's so many women out there who can and do just go out and get pregnant, you know, but I didn't want to do that. So I actually ended up asking a few of the guys that had came into uh, my work that I had known that I kind of actually liked, you know, as a person and thought that they would be a cool, like, you know, um, donor. <laughs> I asked the one guy who actually had a wife and two kids of his own. He was so cool though. He was like a mountain kind of man, man. And he like built his cabin. He like grew all these crops and had like bees. And he was just a really like a cool like hippie dude. He was just so sweet to his kids. And he was good looking. And I was like, you know what? Can't you just please <laughs> just get me pregnant? <laughs> Which is, I mean, him and his wife were okay to talk about that. They were. I know that might sound weird. But what I didn't think about is that, like, he and her said that they couldn't just have a baby and not have anything to do with it. And that's what I wanted. It was I wanted a child, you know, for me and Amy and Trevon and our family. But I didn't want to share a child, you know, with, like, the donor. You know what I'm saying? So, like, what do I do, right? So I couldn't really figure anything out. 
I was kind of like kind of contemplating just having sex with someone and hoping to get pregnant but then I just couldn't do that because like the diseases so it turns out that I talked to my doctor and back then they don't do this anymore I don't believe but back then um, he said with a doctor's permission that I could go through a cryo bank a sperm bank and um, you know get sperm on my own without having to go through you know pay all that and get like inseminated you know like through a place that you could literally order sperm off the internet and uh, get it delivered to your house and that's so cool so that's what I freaking did I ordered sperm off the internet would you guys like to hear about that that'll be the next story I'll go ahead and do it right now like I did last time so I won't make you wait a month again for the next video I'm sorry about that by the way it wasn't intentional I was just enjoying my life and yeah I just kind of time flew man I thought it'd only been a few weeks not a month or more but thank you again for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it and I'm gonna go make the next one right now